In this video, I'm gonna talk about the basics behind the rum punch. I'm gonna give you some simple recipes that you can go away and make, but I'm also gonna give you some inspiration about how to create your own amazing rum punch recipes. Now the rum punch cocktail is one of the most iconic rum cocktails out there. It's been around a very, very long time, hundreds and hundreds of years. But the thing is people don't think it's that popular anymore because when you go out and you look at bar menus and cocktail menus, you rarely see rum punch written on the menu. So people think no one makes it these days. But the truth is most bars, especially rum and, and sort of those kind of bars will have some form of punch on their menu. It's just the fact that they rename it to something tropical, something Larry, something to tie in with the theme of the drink. And that is mainly because the rum punch doesn't have a set recipe. Despite what people think, yes, there are a few famous rum punch recipes out there, Planter's Punch, the Reggae Rum Punch, they are specific recipes. But when you talk about the punch, the punch is not a recipe, it's actually a formula. And that's what I'm gonna guide you through now. The formula is so easy to follow. It does confuse people to start off with, but I promise you it is so easy. The simple rhyme that you probably will have heard of if you're a cocktail enthusiast, you probably will have heard of this, is one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak, and a dash of spice to make it nice, or a pinch of spice to make it nice. With that formula, you can just be left to your own devices to come up with your own cocktails. Now to very quickly deep dive into that formula, let's just talk about it so you really do understand it, it is crystal clear. What does one of and two of mean? The simple thing is the one, the numbers refer to parts, not specific measurements like you would get in most other cocktails. Like another, let's just take a Mai Tai for example. The Mai Tai might call for 60 mil of rum, 15 mil of orgeat syrup, but the rum punch isn't. The rum punch is parts. Now that basically means that you, whatever size part you use, just you continue that through the rest of the cocktail. Now it just could happen that a part could be 15 mil, it could be 25 mil, it could be 30 mil, it doesn't matter. It could be a cup, it could be a jug if you're making a big sort of like a punch bowl or a jug or, or something like that. As long as you know what your part is to start off with, you just keep to that. So for example, if we are just saying, keeping it really simple, in the UK, if we are just saying 25 mil, one UK shot, so a little end of a jigger like this, 25 mil, if that's your one part, then we just go through the rhyme. One part sour. So we are doing one part of your sour. Two parts sweet. You guessed it, two of those. Okay, so 50 mil. Well, you could do a big end because that's 50 mil. But two of those is your sweet. And to get to kind of labor the point even more, when it says three of strong, guess what? Three of those is gonna be your strong ingredient. And then when it gets to four, you've guessed it, four of those is gonna be your weak. So one part sour, two parts sweet, three parts strong, four parts weak. Now the pinch of spice or a dash of spice, in these days, we would loosely regard as a, pin, a dash of spice, Angostura bitters or various other bitters. I'm gonna give you some inspiration through this video. Or back in the day, and even to a certain extent in, in bars, grated nutmeg, a pinch of cinnamon just on top. And that's where the original sort of formula came from. It was like cinnamon or nutmeg on top. But these days we've got various different bitters. You could still use uh, cinnamon, nutmeg, anything like that. But predominantly we're gonna be using bitters. So let's talk about what sour, sweet, strong and weak actually mean, okay? Sour does what it says on the tin. Your sour ingredients, lemon juice, lime juice traditionally, although in some cases, grapefruit juice would be used in there as well. But traditionally, you want, do want quite a healthy amount of lemon juice or, or citrus juice, I should say in there. Lemon juice and lime juice in your cocktail. So that's your sour ingredient. Your sweet, you guessed it, your syrups. In the UK, definitely your purees as well because we are quite fortunate in the UK. We've got a lot of brands that do like a 50% fruit, 50% sugar as a puree. So they are sweetened uh, purees in that sense. But Anything from your syrups like that, whatever brands, we've got four here, you know, your Real, your ODK, your Monin, your William Fox, you know, all of those things will kind of work as your sweets. You can mix and match, you can just do one, it's completely up to you. So we've got the sour covered, we've got the, the sweet covered. Your strong, it's your rum, 
isn't it? Now, of course, you can go brandy, you can go whiskey, you can go cognac, it's completely up to you. But we're talking about rum, rum punches. Now, three of strong, you could just do one rum. But of course, that's where tiki recipes start coming into their own because what they will actually do is they might do a blend of rums. You might do three different rums. You might do two different rums. It doesn't matter. As long as you keep to that sort of three parts, whatever your part is, you could, you know, you could go for your life. You do you with your rum selections, okay? I'm going to give you some inspiration coming up in a second, but again, it is over to you. Spiced rums, whatever. There is kind of what I would call a, a, a crossover category as well, liqueurs, because liqueurs are strong and they are sweet. So you could kind of play about with the rate ratios a little bit. You could do a strawberry liqueur, you could do a coconut liqueur, you could do something like that. You just need to tweak the recipe, the ratio ever so slightly. But yes, liqueurs can go into that, especially stuff like triple sec or, or Cointreau or something like that, that is a 40% um, liqueur. So th they will be, you know, they will go under that strong as well. So we've got the strong covered, the weak. Back in the day, I'm going to talk about this in a second, crushed ice, water, up to modern day times, pineapple juice, papaya juice, guava, apricot, nectar, you name it, whatever, like lemonade, ginger beer, Sprite, all that kind of stuff, you can just play about as long as you do your four parts, okay? And then your pinch of dash, your pinch of spice, dash of spice, we've already covered that, bitters of choice. So let's start you off with an old school rum punch. And now this may look really, really basic, but I promise you, this actually tastes really delicious. And there's a variant coming on this in a second, which would actually be my go-to at home. I flipping love it. So I'm gonna shake these. You could do a flash blend, of course. That You know, you could just whack it in a punch bowl, in a jug. You do you. Uh, but for this, I'm gonna do 15 mil, one five, because I know some of the glasses I'm using, uh, we're daytime drinking here. There's no one really about to kind of have the cocktail. So I'm just gonna do 15 mil as one, my one part. That'll be the last time I ever sort of mentioned that. Again, I'm just gonna to refer to this as parts throughout these videos, but 15 mil, that is what I'm using, okay? So one part sour is my lime juice. Again, ODK, we always got it here. Great for pubs and bars, great for you guys at home. Long life and shelf stable, even after opening 30 days. As I say, Steve the Barman, whack it in the fridge, you'll get a lot longer than 30 days. And it saves you so much time but money as well. So lime juice, perfect product to have around. Now back in the day, sugar, probably uh, powdered sugar, whatever you want to call it, like brown sugar, demerara sugar, uh, white sugar, whatever you kind of want to loosely refer to. We've got sugar syrup here. I've got some white cane sugar up there as well. Again, doesn't matter, but we're going for two parts now of sweet. So I'm going brown sugar for this. You have to think, you know, hundreds of years ago, they didn't have passion fruit syrup. They didn't have, you know, like mango syrup. We didn't have all those kind of weird and wonderful things that we have got now. So this is going back right to the old times. Now I've just bought, pay no attention to the rums really. I've just bought a big selection of rums in from home. Um, so I'm just going to be using different rums in here. Uh, so this, I've got a Jamaican rum uh, and I'm gonna, just going to do three parts now, which I can actually do in that jigger. So three parts of your rum of choice. And then, as I've already mentioned, you know, perhaps in the early days, it might just been a scoop of ice, crushed ice. Yes, there was crushed ice back then. Um, so it might have been that. This day and age, probably soda water to kind of give it that. But crushed ice with a flash blend will give you that dilution. Absolutely not a problem, okay? But I'm going to shake with cubed ice. So I'm just going for my, um, this is where I do want this jigger. Uh, I'm just going for my four parts of soda water. You could even use good old plain tap water, still water. Not a problem. Right, ice shake. Actually, before that, I always forget bitters when I'm doing cocktails. Always forget that. You can whack that in now. A dash of spice to make it nice. So a dash of Angostura bitters in there. Now ice and shake. Now, very often with rum drinks, we do an open gated pour or as Steve DeBarman talk, shake and dump. That simple. So you don't need fresh ice. The punch is kind of like really chilled out now. You can do, of course you do, of course you can. Fresh ice, definitely I'm gonna be doing some crushed ice as well. So I'd probably top that with crushed ice in there. But just for this, shake and dump, top up with a bit more ice, sprig of mint, 
And as I like to uh, be a big advocate for long life and shelf stable ingredients and products, especially on this channel, uh, Frona dried lime. And there you have what I, I, can't, I use this word quite a lot with daiquiris, but a traditional archetypal type of rum punch. I'm not going to lie, the Jamaican rum makes that. Jamaican rum, a little bit of funk in there, a little bit of sweet. Oh, people think that, you know, you kind of always need more um, lime juice than sort of syrup or sweetness in there. With punches, they are designed to be fun. This is still not overly sweet because you've got the rum, which really does kind of bring that back down to earth, you know? That, I defy anyone not to drink that and go, oh, that's quite nice actually. It just proves the simplest of ingredients can make the best cocktails. Now for your second and third cocktails, very simple um, replacements, very simple replacements for one and two ingredients. I've already got the bulk of the ingredients in these cocktails already. So in here, we've got lime juice, in, and we've got the rum, and we've got the bitters, and I've also gone for soda water. So our one part sour is lime juice, but this time, instead of brown sugar, I'm gonna do two parts of um, honey syrup. I love this, I adore this. A honey rum punch is absolutely to die for, especially with Jamaican rum. So that is exactly the same as the first cocktail, except we've swapped honey for um, brown sugar. Now in this cocktail, again, we're gonna give you a little, just up it, just very, very slightly, up the ante. My one part um, sour is my lime juice. I'm now going for two parts of orgeau. Let's go orgeau, or, orgeau. Let's go orgeau, there we go, this time around. So 30 ml of orgeau, so almond, essentially. So one part lime, two parts orgeat, three parts rum in there, uh, four parts this time, I'm going for pineapple juice. So we've got a pineapple and almond rum punch coming here. So essentially four parts, proper pineapple juice in there. I've already got my Angostura bitters in there. So we've created a honey rum punch with soda water and we've created an almond and pineapple rum punch, simply swapping honey syrup in and simply swapping almond syrup in, orgeat syrup, and pineapple juice for the soda water. So ice and shake both of these. And if you're thinking, but I mean, hang on, what are you doing? You're shaking soda water. Don't worry, the soda water I use isn't that fizzy. If I'm using like a bottle, like a glass bottle soda water, yeah, I wouldn't shake that then. But the stuff that I use, the, the supermarket stuff, doesn't have that much effervesc effervescence. There you go, posh word. So lovely tall glass, different glass this time. Tiki glasses coming out in a bit, don't panic. Just an open gated pour, look at that there. That's your honey rum punch. And then for this one, we're going for the pineapple, the pineapple glass, there we go. And we've got our pineapple rum punch. This will need a bit more ice. And you can never have too much mint lying around when you're making rum cocktails. So sprig of mint, and then again, just to sort of showcase some other stuff that you could do here, get in there. Uh, I'm just gonna use some dried fruit here. So first off, uh, we go this side, some dried pineapple, dehydrated pineapple can just sit nicely on there. Long life, shelf stable, doesn't go moldy or anything like that, just sits on the back of your bell quite nicely. And then I think for a bit of, bit of uh, colour contrast, we're just going to go, there we go, like a, a dried passion fruit just sitting on there as well. Oh, the honey. I could drink that all day long. Honey monster, I love that stuff. And then the pineapple and almond. Crowd favourites. Simple swaps. Simple, simple. That's that easy. So the fourth punch, everyone loves a blue cocktail. But blue doesn't have to be plain, dull and boring. But it's just a couple of things to sort of realise here. If you are using like a juice with a blue syrup like that, it's going to go green. So you want, if you want it blue, if you want it electric blue, you nearest damn it need to keep the colours as clear and as neutral as possible. So we will have a slight sort of tropical hue to this simply because of the lime juice that's gone in this, but we're going to do a simple swap. So there's, there's one part lime juice gone in there. The two parts, I'm going to go, I'll use this one now, for a blue curacao. Blue curacao doesn't have to be uh, the alcoholic stuff. You've got blue curacao syrup, which gives you the color and the sweetness. So we're going for two parts of blue syrup in there. So one part, one part citrus, two parts blue syrup. Your three parts strong, 
I'm going for a split base this time. We're going for a pineapple and coconut. So pineapple rum. Uh, so split base in this, again, one and, th where are we? One and three quarter parts, if you like, of coconut rum. Play, play about, you know, especially if your rums are not as kind of as strong as well. So one and a half, essentially, of um, uh, coconut rum and one and a half of, uh, did I say one and three quarters a minute ago? I went one and a half, because that's obviously half of three, isn't it? Right, and then, there we go. And one and a half parts pineapple. The soda's already in there, but for the bitters this time, because I don't, I don't want Angostura bitters, I don't want those heavy things. You can get loads of different bitters around these days. These are banana and bergamot. Bergamot is a nice citrusy kind of thing, kind of uh, fruit as well. Uh, so I've got, combine those with banana. So we've got banana, we've got pineapple, and we've got coconut going in there. So this will be lovely. Glass of choice, and you're gonna be so impressed with the color of this. Again, open gated pour, shake, shake and dump. Look at that. But this will have all the flavor that you want. And then again, you can never go wrong with a sprig of mint, but this time I'm going for a dried lemon because I like I like sort of yellow and blue. God damn, that's delicious. That is so much fun. If you're the sort of person that doesn't like blue drinks, then tune off wave. Go, go away now, you know, this video is not for you. But if you're the sort of person that does like fun and fruity drinks, then you're gonna have to watch the next video because I'm gonna get even more involved with the rum punch and I'm gonna give you my all-star rum punch recipe at the end of the next video.